So if we were wanting to kind of look at the overall structure of the gaseous planets, we would pair up Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter with Saturn, and we would pair up Uranus with Neptune. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see that both Jupiter and Saturn have these clouds, and we'll talk more about their clouds in a minute. But underneath the clouds, they have a gaseous hydrogen. And then what happens as you go um, from the exterior of the planet towards the planet's rocky core is you, we, we come up against increased pressure, more and more pressure, kind of like um, if you looked at the previous part when we looked at the pillows being squished by the pillow above it. One of the things about increasing the pressure of a gas is you can actually make that gas liquefy. And so that's why we have um, an outer layer of, of gaseous hydrogen, followed by inside of that we have liquid hydrogen because of the increased pressure. And then we have something called metallic hydrogen, where hydrogen is taking on some um, properties kind of uh, similar to what metals do. And then in the inside we have that rocky core. And the core is solid metals and um, rock and um, solid um, hydrogen-containing compounds. So if we compare um, that structure with this structure, so this is Uranus and Neptune. So again, we have the clouds, and we're going to see that the clouds, um, actually what gives it that blue appearance is the presence of methane, CH4. Then we have a layer of gaseous hydrogen. Notice that there is no liquid hydrogen. And that's uh, because it's not, at that point, the density is not, not great enough, if I understand that right. Oops. Okay. But they ha do have that rocky core. Okay. So um, all of the gaseous planets, if you were to go stand on a gaseous planet, um, you couldn't do it because um, the edge of the planet is, is, is not solid. If you want to go stand on something, go stand on one of the planet's moons, okay? Um, and as we go from the outside part of the planet inward, we're going to get um, higher and higher pressures and actually higher temperatures as well. In the core of all four gaseous planets is going to be solid, okay? Um, but the layers are different. Let's take a look at, um, again, looking at the um, orangish planets, Jupiter and Saturn. They kind of tend to have this sort of, these layers here. Um, I believe this is just kind of restating that we are increasing pressures as we go from the outside, the edge of Jupiter, towards Jupiter's core. And as we increase pressures, and you, actually the pressures are shown here. Wow, that is really, <laughs> we go from one bar to 500,000 bars to 2 million bars. Um, and we increase the temperature and notice that the hydrogen is basically changing its phase, its physical phase. Um, and as I said, that me metallic hydrogen, hydrogen is acting like a metal. Um, so I have a slide coming up that's going to actually um, s explain to you that Jupiter, and I believe all the Jovian planets, have a, a very strong magnetic field. And actually, remember this slide when we get there, um, that magnetic fields, a planet can create a magnetic field if it has some sort of molten um, in, its, in its core, and within that molten we have charges. And so... Here we have this planet that actually has the charges um, in its uh, metallic hydrogen. One of the things I haven't mentioned yet about Jupiter is that Jupiter spins on its axis, rotates on its axis, not in 24 hours, but in about 10 hours. So here's this massive planet humong with a humongous size spinning on its axis once every 10 hours, and so all of these charged particles is creating a crazy magnetic field. So the core, we think, is rock. No dinosaurs there, though. And kind of, I would assume, maybe drawn to scale, we have this, the Earth here. And this, I know it's not this way, but it almost seems like the gaseous planets like swallowed little terrestrial planets. And I know I didn't work that way, but I think that's funny. Um, 
So, um, like I mentioned before, if you kind of compare what we believe the structure of Jupiter and Saturn are to that of Uranus and Neptune, Uranus and Neptune are lacking that liquid hydrogen. And um, it's believed because uh, they don't create the pressure in their interiors like Jupiter and Saturn do. Okay. So Earth's magnetosphere or magnetic field is created because Earth is rotating on its axis and because Earth's core has molten iron in it. So those two conditions are required to create a magnetic field. So I mentioned um, that humongous layer of um, hydrogen acting as a metal, charged particles, and think of how quickly Jupiter rotates on its axis, and there you go. Um, it has a crazy magnetic field. I don't know if you can see this, but kind of drawn to scale, there's the little planet Jupiter, and you can see the humongous flux lines of, of its magnetic field. Over here to the left, we have the, um, the solar wind coming and being deflected by um, Jupiter's magnetic field. But just like uh, the charged particles get trapped in our Van Allen belts, and are trapped by our magnetic field and kind of can eke through our poles uh, on the Earth, so also, and create or auroras, so also um, Jupiter can have auroras. And there you go, there are some of Jupiter's auroras. Pretty.